Welcome to the fifth lecture of ECE 113. And in this lecture, we will be talking about how our circuit components behave in, uh, when they are subjected to high frequencies. Okay, so uh, when you look at a circuit, well, you only see the components, the resistor, inductor, and capacitor themselves. But if we are talking about high frequencies, you also need to consider the wires of, uh, of the interconnects, rather, of all these components. How are they connected? Are they connected via a breadboard? Are they connected via soldering lead? Uh, are, they, are their wires braided together? And so on and so forth. All of that actually has an effect on the response of your circuit in high frequencies. Right. So, uh, all of that you'll have to consider, and also you look at how these components are assembled, how are they uh, implemented. You have to look at that. Okay. So the summary of the characteristics of our components in high frequencies is shown in this slide. So just a brief summary. The wires basically have an increased resistance due to what we call the skin effect. And that's actually the defining characteristic of wires. Resistors uh, create uh, the the through hole resistors in uh, the through hole resistors specifically have a self inductance and some capacitance. Let me draw that for you. So a resistor, through hole resistor at least looks like this. Okay. And these uh, wires right here, the wires uh, create a self-inductance depending on their length. They're longer, higher self-inductance. Also, between these wires, you create some form of capacitance. And all of these have a pronounced effect when you have a higher frequency. Okay. Capacitors, your insulator has a Non-zero conductance, rather. The non-zero con conductance lets current flow through the insulating material. Okay. And you actually create some form of parallel resistance in your capacitor. Okay. And the wires also create self-inductance. Do not forget that. However, out of all the four of them, the inductors are the ones that are most notorious because these inductors are created from very long wires that are wound together. So I apologize for the poor drawing. Very long wires wound together, which since they are long wires, the resistance is significant. Okay, And also between these wires, you have some form of capacitance. And you, uh, that capacitance is distributed all over all the wires. And when you add them all up, you have a significant capacitance. That's why our inductors actually do not behave as how, uh, how we predicted it when we're going to use it in high frequencies. Let's go, let's go over each and every one of them. In summary, the wires are this. They could be metal interconnects, device LEDs. Okay, and uh, they can be soldered, they can be braided, they can be hollow, they can be solid, and all, and so on and so forth. But in, when we are going to analyze circuits, we assume that they are actually short circuits. Just a connection. But in high frequency, its behavior depends on the diameter and the length. How? It's because of what we call the skin effect. What is the skin effect? Say you have a current that's passing through the conductor in this direction. Okay, So you have a current passing through this direction. If it's a time-changing current, it induces a magnetic field, a time-changing magnetic field. Wait, let me just change the color. A time-changing magnetic field flowing in this direction. And this time-changing magnetic field actually creates an eddy current that is canceling the current inside our conductor. So as you go further inside, the current becomes smaller. 
compared to when you are outside, you're near the skin of our conductor, then the current will be there because of the absence of eddy currents. To illustrate that, let's look at the current distribution for a, a copper wire at a frequency of 10 kilohertz. As you can see, it's actually pretty uh, uniform. It's constant over the whole radius. But if we increase the frequency at 1 megahertz, the current is concentrating around this area. And because of that, you have a pronounced resistance around 0 0.15 ohms per meter. Okay. As compared to when you have frequency of 10 kilohertz, it's 0 0.06 ohms per meter. Right here. Okay. So you can see the effect of skin effect. Okay. How do you characterize the skin effect? You use what we call the skin depth. And quite easily, the skin depth is just... Okay, the, the distance from the surface, uh, you look at the surface, the distance at which the current from here at the beginning is 37, 37% of what you have here. So at this point from the surface, let me just use a different color. So you're here at the surface, you have a certain current density. And as you go deeper into the conductor, at a point where the current density is 37% of what is the original, 37% of this, the length of that or the distance of that or the depth of that is called the skin depth. That's it. Okay? And it's a function of your frequency. The higher the frequency, the smaller the skin depth. It's also a function of your permeability and also of conductivity. Okay? If you don't want skin depth to happen, you need a superconductor. Okay? A superconductor has an infinite conductance, which makes your, well, basically your wire to be perfectly conducting. So since the current is distributed over a smaller area than normal, what happens is the resistance goes up because the effective area of the path of the current goes down. That's it. There's a considerable increase in resistance because of high frequencies and because of skin effect. How do we avoid this? Well, we can use wires that are distributed together. Okay? So we call these stranded wires. By using stranded wires and uh, basically you're eliminating skin effect by redistributing the currents evenly over all these wires instead of one big wire with the same volume. Right? Also, when you have long lengths of wire, you actually have a self-inductance. So when current flows, creates again a time-changing electric uh, magnetic field rather, and because of that, you have an induced opposite uh, current with the opposite the flow of the original current. So the wires seem to reduce, or sorry, seem to resist, rather, a change in current. That is your inductance. Okay. So the behavior of inductance is that as your frequency increases, self-inductance becomes more significant, and this will be discussed later, but the hint is omega L. You increase your frequency, your impedance or reactance, okay, rather, the reactance of an inductor actually increases. And all conductors exhibit this property at RF. And it depends on okay, some length and diameter of the conductor. It is your uh, some, what do you call this? Approximation, right? An approximation of the inductance per unit length, okay, of your. Uh, wire. Okay, now let's look at resistors. The resistors or uh, resistance first is the property of the material that determines at which how much electricity is converted to heat. Okay, so the resistors consume power, convert it to heat, well, most of the time. 
Now, and it's extensively used in many circuits, as you know. But uh, if we have resistors in high frequencies, well, you cannot ignore the effects of a series inductance and a parallel capacitance. Okay? These are all parasitic effects of your resistor. Common resistor types, are there are four. Carbon composition, wire wound, metal film, and thin film chip. And just to summarize that, basically to compare all the resistors, the best one would be a thin film chip. Of course, the smaller you are, the less your parasitics. Okay? Since thin film chips have uh, no wires or no uh, interconnects like this one, okay, you eliminate or you minimize your parasitic inductance. Okay? So this is the best thing to use up to 2 gigahertz. Okay? Metal film is the next best thing. It's useful up to 10 megahertz. So maybe that's something you should use in your design projects. Right? Since your design projects do not even exceed 10, me 10 megahertz. Don't use carbon composition or wire wound. Okay? You won't be able to get anything good. All right. Next one is for the capacitor. Basically, capacitors uh, store charge. That's it. You already know this. And it's uh, the most basic. Uh, capacitor would be two parallel plates and uh, sandwiching an insulator. Okay? And an application of the capacitor is actually one. There's a filter okay, as part of your resonance circuit. Also, we use it for coupling, and as I've showed you in the mixers uh, lecture. Okay? The dielectrics commonly used for our capacitors are what you see on your screen right now. Okay? So, uh, the common ones, the small ones that you used are in this family right here. Ceramic, low dielectric constant, and a ceramic with high dielectric constant. At RF, actually, the equivalent circuit of your capacitor looks like this. It has a parallel capacitance due to the non-zero conductance of your insulator, a series resistance due to the wires, and an inductance due to the LEDs. Okay? Same as with your resistor. Because of the LEDs, you have a series inductance. Okay? So you have something like this. So the insulation resistance, uh, basically just the amount of DC leakage. And it's roughly very large. The resistance at 100 giga ohms in DC. Practically very large. Okay? The effective series resistance okay, is the resistance that the capacitor sees okay, uh, when we account RS and RP. So the effective series resistance uh, is approximately equal to this equation. Okay, and it decreases with frequency. All right, so PF here is around less than 0 0.1. This is just an approximation. Don't need to think about it that much. But because of this, we can now characterize the dissipation factor of your capacitor. What is this? This is the amount of energy lost to the capacitor. Theoretically, the capacitor should not lose energy. It just stores energy. But because of parasitic factors, such as your uh, inductance, sorry, your, your uh, resistance in your insulator and the resistance of your wires, there is some loss of energy in your capacitor. Okay. And uh, we define then the quality factor of the uh, capacitor to be equal to its impedance, okay, Xc, divided by the ESR. Okay. And it, we found out actually that 1 divided by the dissipation factor is 
the quality factor. Some notes about the quality factor. The larger the quality factor, the better the capacitor. And ideally, we want the capacitor to have an infinite quality factor. Okay? That means it has no dissipation. Okay. And the response of a practical or real capacitor looks something like this. So there's some peaking right here. Okay? And at this point, basically, at this point, your capacitor has resonated with your inductor. So as you can see here at the circuit, so this capacitor has resonated with your inductor. So they will cancel each other out and you have a resistance RS plus RP. Okay. And then after that region, after that point, the induction the, the inductor will take over. Okay. And uh, your capacitor will act as an inductor instead of a capacitor. Okay. And that's something common in high frequency circuits. Your capacitor could act as an inductor or vice versa. That's fine. Right? So uh, that really happens. You just need to take into account this effect in your calculations. Okay? Uh, the frequency of operation, if you want it to be capacitive, the rule of thumb is you operate at a frequency that is a hundred times lower than this point. Okay? So a hundred times lower you mean that's two decades below the frequency of uh, resonance. Okay, hundred times below that's already good. Ten times below maybe so so. Okay? So you take note of that. Okay. So the internal inductance of capacitors, so if you have a larger valued capacitors, you have higher internal inductance. So larger valued capacitors actually are very large and a component that is very large exhibits larger inductance. Okay. If you want to be sure, you use what we call an LCR meter or a network analyzer to measure the actual impedance of your components, especially if you're working with circuits that are greater than 100 megahertz. Common capacitor types are ceramic, mica, and metallized film. This metallized film has a lot of different uh, films that they use for your capacitance. And just to compare them, ceramic has two types. The best thing to use here is actually the, the, one, with the, the one with the chip, of course. Okay. And it's useful above 500 megahertz. This is actually what is used for your high frequency circuit since uh, they have a high Q factor. Basically, it eliminates everything, the wire leads, the wire LEDs rather. So it eliminates this. And uh, basically, you have reduced uh, inductance and so on and so forth. All right. The most notorious component would be the inductor since normally it is wire wound or coiled so it's coiled to increase the flux linkage and since the flux linkage is directly proportional to the inductor then we have our uh, greater inductance an application of the inductor is actually the choke so it chokes rf signals within a certain path that's it. That's one great use of an inductor, aside from filters, of course. Okay. But in RF, the long lengths of wires have a distributed resistance, which greatly increases as you increase the number of turns. The capacitance also accumulates. Okay. And basically, you have an inductor equivalent circuit. As you can see, the inductor also has a capacitance, all right? And when they resonate, okay, when they resonate, okay, uh, they disappear, they cancel each other out, and you have an effective resistance at your circuit. Okay? And the behavior of an inductor is opposite that of a capacitor. Okay? At some point, it will reach resonance. 100 times 
below that resonant frequency, you create or your inductor will behave as what you predicted. 10 times below that frequency may be good. Okay. But anyway, anything below that uh, frequency of resonance, your inductor is inductive. But if you go higher, it will become capacitive. Okay? So basically, all your components, when you're dealing with high frequencies, all your components are basically resonant circuits. And how do we deal with resonant circuits? We'll talk about that in the next lecture. All right? So let's look at inductors first. The quality factor is defined by this. XL here is the impedance at resonance. Okay? And ideally, we want an infinite quality factor. That means R sub S is 0. Okay? So how do we increase that Q? We use a larger diameter wire because that decreases resistance. Or you spread windings apart, you decrease your distributed capacitance. Or increase the permeability of the flux linkage by using a magnetic core. Right. If you're using air core, the inductance of your uh, inductor would look would have this equation rather, and this is again just an approximation. I don't need to think about it that much. You can just go back whenever you need to. But uh, we are we don't want to use air because they're bulky. You can use magnetic core materials, and it because it has greater permeability, it allows you to have a larger inductance even though your uh, number of wires are small or fewer uh, you have fewer turns and we know that if you have fewer turns you have less uh, distributed capacitance okay so basically it's very advantageous but there is always a trade-off a core could introduce you to some losses why because a, a core is actually uh, a conductor. In a conductor, you create, if you have a magnetic field inside a conductor here, the tendency is there are currents created inside the core. Okay? So, and there's also sensitivity to temperature and so on and so forth. So, there are trade offs when you're designing. And that's fine. As engineering students, or as future engineers, rather, you'll get used to these trade-offs. Right. So the best uh, inductor would be the toroid, mainly because the flux inside the toroid is uh, just moving around the core. Right. There's not much leakage going outside of that uh, inductor, and it kind of just prevents losses. So the use of uh, your core would be, the material would be iron or iron, sorry, yeah, correct, iron and ferrite. And it's, it has high permeability allowing greater Q factor for your inductor. And it's also self-shielding. So if we use the core like this, then there's bound to be leakage outside. And this leakage actually contributes to the loss. But if you have... Uh, if you trap, rather, your uh, flux inside your inductor, then you have your uh, you have your inductor with high Q factor. Okay? So, uh, to summarize, well, instead of looking at the circuit like this, you will have to look at or analyze your circuit like this. Okay, so how do we analyze something like this? How do we, uh, how do we, what do you call this? How do we design if our components won't be what we, what, what is, or, okay, I'm running out of words here. But how do we basically design our circuits if our, if we cannot trust, there we go, if we cannot trust our components? So we'll see in the next lecture. That's the end of this lecture. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to leave a comment below. Thank you for listening. 
i'll see you next meeting.